All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Arts Tribeca Trade Group, and today is Wednesday, July 18th. So a quick recap today. Uh, you know, today there wasn't a ton of things to trade today, and I'll explain. You know, I think it's always about strategy. I'm going to go over a couple technicals and so forth, but, um, you know, it's really more about strategy, I think, than anything else on days like this. Um, if you remember yesterday, I had a huge day yesterday, a huge day in P&L. Uh, what I've learned over the years is basically to, you know, play a little bit of defense after you've had uh, a good day. You know, when I first started trading out, uh, when I first started trading, trading my own money, um, if I had a really big day, I would get confident and maybe a little bit overconfident and, and start taking a little bit too many risks. What I've learned to do over the years is when I have a really nice day and everything goes the right way for me, which I literally had about... I don't know, six to eight trades that just went, they all went my way yesterday. Uh, so what I kind of realized is, you know, statistically that usually doesn't keep up for long. And what I usually do is play a little bit of defense uh, the next day and kind of, you know, make sure that I take targets, make sure that I take some money off the table. Uh, and then I can kind of, you know, reset and, and let my confidence cool a little bit and, and think a little bit more clearly. So, what helps me is just to kind of think about strategy, especially when the market is not open, about what I want to do on a, on a day. And, you know, I approach, I do approach like reading the tape every day with, with, um, with the same approach. I'm, you know, I'm looking optimistically, objectively for trades on the tape, but if they're not there, they're not there. So I, you know, I traded a little bit today. Um, what I also do is the other strategy that I put into play is after I've had uh, you know a really big success day, um, if I want to participate, uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll I'll trade, but I'll do it on a much smaller smaller um, scale. You know, an, I do manage an all-day trading room, and I have to be there all day long, even if I don't want to trade because of you know strategy-wise. Uh, what I will still do is just you know participate a l just a little bit um, in, in some things, um, just to kind of keep myself in in the game so you know one of the things that i did today and, and so by the way price action uh you know we've had a nice swing here for two plus weeks uh the price is above the short-term moving averages so while it's doing that you know uh it's swinging you know we've continued to be in a swing maybe the swing is getting a little bit mature but i'm not going to really uh try to pick when price moves back below the five period moving average um you know you kind of have to just wait for that to happen on its own rather than try to call the top. Um, again, something that I've learned to do over the years. Same thing with NASDAQ. NASDAQ, um, you know, a couple back and forth days, but the price is still above the short-term moving averages. Let it do it, do what it wants. Um, small caps, which I played the small caps today. I bought a little bit of, of IWM in the beginning of the day. It was down a half a percent, which I thought was a little bit unnecessary. Um, I didn't even, I didn't trade this for a whole swing. I basically said, uh, you know, I bought it on the lows and got out on the bottom of value, uh, which was fine. That was a nice quick 30 cents, I think, in the, in the options uh, that I purchased. So that was a nice trade. Um, could I guess it could have given you a second opportunity and you could have played that, which they close on the high of the day, which is pretty good, I think. Um, so the other thing is, you know, why I'm a little bit cautious here. And again, it's, it's not, it's no, there's no, you know, sell signal or anything like that. But I just know over time when the VIX gets to, goes from, you know, 14 or 15, um, not always in a straight line, but, you know, right where we are right now is, is an 11 or 12. So the market is getting pretty much, price to perfection, I want to say. The market is not anticipating any short-term volatility. So, uh, you know, I think at this point, it's it's time to kind of wait for another dip in the market um, to really deploy a lot of assets. And again, you could swing trade a few things. You know, I, I went into, um, you know, I tried a couple day trades today. They didn't really work. I took them off at the end of the day. I tried TripAdvisor. Um, and what was the other one? I tried buying Microsoft, which was down a little bit. That was basically a scratch. But those are my three trades uh, that I did today. No, no new swing trades. Also, a good testament to taking profits. I talked about overstock yesterday. This is why you take targets, right? Overstock was up 10% yesterday. Today, it's down 7%. So net, it's up 3%. 
Um, but if I want to, I could add that 100 shares that I took off uh, you know, yesterday in the highs and I could put it back into play. But again, taking targets is a big thing if you're, short, if you're doing some, some short-term options trading or, or even, uh, which is what I own is cash, so a little short-term trading there. Um, so again, um, that's basically, you know, in a nutshell, how today went. I think a choppy day didn't really commit too much um, capital. Uh, a couple notable option trades for the day. And again, there wasn't much. You know, this is basically how it is for for and around earnings. It's going to be choppy. Uh, and also the option flow is going to be noisy to read. You get a lot of names that people buy calls and, you know, they have earnings in a couple of days and half, those time, half the time those calls don't work. Uh, U.S. Steel had a nice move today. There was just a little bit of calls bought in the beginning of the day. Um, had a nice move and now coming a little bit out of congestion. I would say a name to watch. Uh, CCL, all the all the cruise lines were very strong. There was a little bit of calls that, that were bought, you know, right uh, in the beginning of the day with that strength. Also in a little bit of the airlines, which were really strong. That was your best performing group today. The Jets airline ETF was up 2.7%. I don't have anything on in that space. Tricky, tricky group to trade, but um, had some nice relative, real nice relative strength today on UAL earnings. Um, the financials did pretty well today. Uh, JP Morgan, uh, which is the one I bought yesterday. You go to the five minute bar on this. Notice you got, um, oh, that's wrong. Not a VPOC. I thought there was one up there. But, um, you know, a nice move out of, if you look at the five period, uh, sorry, not five period, but the five minute chart, you can see a nice bust out of the value area. You know, notice the value area was very slim today so once it got going worked pretty well i took one target on this uh today i almost hit a second target um just did not go as high as i needed it to go um for this one so nice move out of jp morgan um a couple other trades itb home builders i looked at this trade a couple times today i could not take it it's a short-term trade next week's calls uh the the home building numbers were just too weak and and um the new, new home sales as well as building permits missed by a, a decent margin. So, you know, no, no trade for me uh, there for the, uh, for the ITB, even though those home builders have been super strong the last two days. They actually fared okay, you know, so they took the bad news pretty well. The ITB finished down only 20 basis points. So maybe they are putting in a little bit of a bottom, you know, considering that they're weathering the bad news pretty well. You know, a couple months ago when they had bad news, they got crushed. So maybe they're at a point where they're getting interesting. Watch the 200-day moving average in the ITB. Remember in the CTF, 62% of the CTF is home builders, much higher than XHB. Um, this trade looked pretty interesting. Play. Uh, this is Dave and Buster's. Had great earnings. Sold off. Uh, we saw calls go up, I think, on 629. Uh, so in here. Um, and then they took those calls off and uh, they reloaded again today for August calls. So pretty interesting. Um, Red Hat, I would say this was, again, one of the, one of the most notable uh, trades of the day. Um, the size was pretty good on this. And I have the trade up over here. These were the September 165, 170 call spread. So they put this trade up. You could see the 165, 165 calls for $2.3 million in option premium, the uh, 170s were 1.4. So about $900,000, oh, no, sorry, scratch that, 1.1 million, right? One, uh, that cost them, no, $900,000 uh, in terms of option premium. Uh, somebody thinking that Red Hat fills the earnings gap um, from here, and they did this for September. Um, notice they report 925. I think that comes inside of that. So they've got some time. They're thinking that Red Hat recovers. I like that trade. I did not put it on today, but considered it. Um, and then a few other trades that went up. AYX, Shack. You know, you kind of have to be pretty choosy with some of these things. Shack has had a, and I think a lot of people are noticing the move in Shack the last couple of days. You know, it's been up about, what, six percent the last couple of days it could still move higher but they purchased those calls right at the end of the day so maybe keep an eye on that name see if it has further strength i just don't like um for me personally i'm, I'm pretty picky with this stuff same thing with iyx or ayx um there, there were some calls that went up on the high of the day so i don't i would rather if the calls happened you know i like purchasing uh names that are in an uptrend 
once they come into support, not once they're kind of blown out to the upside. We talked about that earlier in the week with Planet Fitness, PLNT. Um, notice, just to kind of give you a sense, they bought calls on the high of the day the other day. It's not done anything since since that. So, you know, I think, again, being picky with names and, and just because there's calls that go up doesn't mean it's a good entry. Um, so, again, I go over this in the trading room um, all day long, every day. Finally, take two. Also, you know, this has been pretty consistent with call buyers coming into the name. It's getting close to a 52-week high. There was a um, uh, conference today delivering alpha. I forget who it was, but somebody mentioned uh, take two positively. They even thought that they could be a buyout candidate. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty interesting play. So we'll keep an eye on that name. A lot of strength to it. All right, guys, that's it for today's recap. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.